Welcome on Kim Ludd Channel. I bet you didn't know how drastically urban transportation has evolved over the years. What would be a world without cars, trains, or even bicycles? A world where the primary mode of transportation relied on the strength of animals, primarily horses. Cities swelled with people seeking better opportunities, leading to cramped living conditions and a surge in demand for goods and services. Narrow, cobblestone streets became choked with traffic, slowing down the movement of people and goods. City planners, engineers, and visionaries began to explore alternative modes of transportation that could address the escalating urban mobility crisis. To appreciate the transportation revolution, we must journey back in time. In the 18th and early 19th centuries, urban life moved at the pace of horse-drawn carriages. These carriages were the primary mode of transport for people and goods. Wealthy merchants paraded in opulent coaches, while the less affluent used crowded omnibuses. Horses required constant care, adding to urban life's complexities. Streets littered with manure created sanitation issues. Despite challenges, horses shaped early urban landscapes and city layouts. As the 19th century progressed, the limitations of a horse-drawn transportation became apparent. The Industrial Revolution set the stage for a transportation revolution. Inventors sought to harness steam power for faster, more reliable transportation. The first breakthrough was the steam locomotive. In 1825, the Stockton and Darlington Railway became the first public railway to use steam locomotives. This event marked a new era in transportation. Steam locomotives revolutionized the transportation of goods. Railways soon connected industrial centers with major cities. Railways had a profound impact on urban development. The search for efficient urban transportation led to the electric tramway. While steam power revolutionized long distance travel, a cleaner, quieter solution was needed for cities. Inventors saw electricity's potential for urban transport. Early electric vehicles showed promise but overhead wires were key to their success. This innovation led to the electric tramway. In 1881, Werner von Siemens unveiled the first electric tramway. Electric trams were smoke-free and quiet, making them ideal for urban environments. Tramways triumphant, a network of progress. The success of the first electric tramway sparked a period of rapid innovation and expansion. Inventors and engineers refined the technology, developing more powerful motors, more efficient power distribution systems, and more comfortable and spacious tram cars. Cities around the world embraced the electric tramway, recognizing its potential to transform urban transportation and improve the lives of their citizens. By the turn of the 20th century, electric tramways had become a ubiquitous site in major cities across Europe and North America, their overhead wires forming a web of progress above bustling streets. The construction of tramway networks was a massive undertaking, requiring significant investment in infrastructure, rolling stock, and power generation. Cities dug up streets to lay tracks, erected poles and wires to carry the electrical current, and built power stations to generate the electricity needed to drive the system. Despite the challenges and costs, the benefits of electric tramways were undeniable. They offered a faster, cleaner, and more efficient alternative to horse-drawn transportation, carrying millions of passengers each day. Tramways became an integral part of urban life, connecting people to their workplaces, homes, and leisure destinations. A city reimagined the impact of electric tramways. The impact of electric tramways on urban development was profound. Tramways enabled cities to expand outward, breaking free from the constraints of walking distance and horse-drawn transportation. Suburbs became accessible, leading to the growth of residential neighborhoods. Businesses could establish along tramway lines, expanding their customer base. 
Tramways also played a role in reducing social segregation. Workers could live further from their workplaces in more spacious housing. The introduction of electric tramways also impacted the visual landscape of cities. Beyond the city limits, trams and suburban expansion. As tramway networks expanded outward from city centers, they facilitated the development of a new type of urban landscape, the streetcar suburb. These suburbs, designed specifically around the accessibility provided by electric tramways, offered a compelling alternative to the crowded and often unsanitary conditions of inner city neighborhoods. Streetcar suburbs were characterized by their grid-like street patterns designed to accommodate tram tracks and facilitate efficient passenger movement. Unlike the densely packed tenements of the inner city, streetcar suburbs featured detached or semi-detached homes with front yards and gardens, offering residents a taste of suburban living within easy reach of urban amenities. The development of streetcar suburbs was fueled by a growing middle class eager to escape the confines of the city center while maintaining access to its economic and social opportunities. Tramways provided this crucial link, allowing residents to commute to work, shop, and socialize in the city while enjoying the peace and tranquility of suburban life. The rise of streetcar suburbs had a lasting impact on urban planning and development. It introduced the concept of transit-oriented development, where residential, commercial, and recreational areas are clustered around transit hubs, reducing the need for private automobiles and fostering a more pedestrian-friendly environment. The enduring influence of tramways. The electric tramway, once a symbol of urban modernity, faced competition from automobiles and buses. As cities grew, tramways became less appealing due to fixed routes and slow speeds. Post-World War II, many cities dismantled tramways, replacing them with buses and expanding roads. Recently, tramways have resurged as sustainable urban transportation. Modern trams feature technologies like regenerative braking and low-floor designs. Cities recognize tramways' benefits in reducing congestion and improving air quality. The legacy of tramways highlights their transformative power on urban landscapes. The Iron Horse arrives, steam railways and urban transformation. While electric tramways were transforming urban transportation within city limits, a parallel revolution was underway with the expansion of steam railways. The ability of steam locomotives to haul heavy loads at unprecedented speeds had already revolutionized long distance travel and the transportation of goods, but their impact on urban development was equally profound. As railway lines extended their reach into major cities, they brought about a fundamental shift in urban geography. No longer were cities confined to the areas within walking distance of their historic cores. Railways enabled the growth of suburbs and satellite towns, connected to the city centre by a network of iron rails. The arrival of the railway also had a significant impact on the social and economic fabric of cities. Businesses, particularly those involved in manufacturing and trade, clustered around railway lines and stations, taking advantage of the efficient transportation of goods and raw materials. This concentration of economic activity led to the growth of industrial districts and the creation of new job opportunities. The influx of people seeking work in these new industrial centres fueled the demand for housing and urban services further accelerating the growth of cities. Railways, once seen as a primarily industrial technology, were rapidly becoming an integral part of urban life, shaping the physical and social landscape of cities in unprecedented ways. Grand stations and urban gateways. The construction of railway lines into major cities necessitated grand central stations, monumental structures symbolizing the railway age's transformative power. These architectural marvels, often Victorian, became iconic landmarks and expressions of civic pride. Grand central stations were bustling microcosms of urban life, housing restaurants, shops, and theaters. 
they became social gathering places embodying the spirit of progress and interconnectedness. The design often reflected the city's history, culture, and aspirations. London's St. Pancras Station celebrated the city's industrial might and grandeur. New York's Grand Central Terminal embodied the city's ambition and global role. These grand stations served as gateways, welcoming travelers and connecting them to urban life. As cities grappled with the challenges of congestion and the limitations of surface transportation, a bold and innovative solution emerged, the subway. This revolutionary concept proposed building railways underground, creating a separate transportation network beneath the bustling streets, free from the constraints of surface traffic and obstacles. The idea of underground railways was not entirely new. Miners had long used tunnels and underground tramways to transport coal and ore, but these systems were rudimentary and hazardous, unsuitable for passenger transportation. The challenge for engineers was to create a safe, efficient, and commercially viable underground railway system capable of carrying large numbers of passengers. Several factors converged to make the subway a reality. Advances in tunneling technology, particularly the development of the tunnel boring machine, made it possible to excavate tunnels more efficiently and with greater precision. The advent of electric traction, which offered a cleaner and more controllable power source than steam, made underground railways a more practical proposition. Moreover, the growing urgency to address urban congestion and improve transportation efficiency created a receptive environment for radical solutions. City planners and politicians, recognizing the potential of subways to alleviate traffic woes and enhance urban mobility, were increasingly willing to invest in these ambitious infrastructure projects. A triumph of engineering, constructing the tube. Constructing the London Underground was a monumental engineering feat pushing the boundaries of 19th century technology and innovation. The challenges were immense, ranging from excavating tunnels beneath densely populated areas to ensuring the stability of buildings and infrastructure above ground. The early cut and cover method, while suitable for shallow tunnels, proved disruptive and impractical for deeper lines. To overcome these limitations, engineers turned to the more complex and challenging method of deep level tunneling. This involved digging vertical shafts down to the desired depth, then using tunnel boring machines and hand excavation to create the tunnels that would carry the railway lines. Tunneling deep beneath the city presented numerous hazards, including flooding, cave-ins, and the need to navigate existing underground infrastructure, such as sewer lines and building foundations. Workers faced dangerous and often claustrophobic conditions, toiling long hours in dimly lit tunnels filled with dust, noise, and the ever-present threat of collapse. Despite these challenges, the engineers and workers persevered, driven by a combination of technological ambition, economic imperative, and a vision of a city transformed by underground transportation. Their efforts resulted in a marvel of engineering, a labyrinthine network of tunnels and stations that would come to define London's urban landscape. The Metropolitan Miracle Transforming London's Urban Fabric. The London Underground, more than just a transportation system, became a catalyst for urban transformation, reshaping the city's physical and social geography in profound ways. By connecting distant parts of the city, the Underground enabled London to expand outwards, relieving congestion in the central core and fostering the growth of suburbs. The accessibility provided by the underground led to the development of new residential areas on the outskirts of London, offering an alternative to the crowded and often unsanitary conditions of the inner city. Workers, no longer limited to living within walking distance of their workplaces, could now commute from more spacious and affordable housing in the suburbs. The underground also facilitated the growth of commercial and leisure activities beyond the city centre. Shops, theatres and restaurants sprang up around underground stations, taking advantage of the increased foot traffic and creating new centres of economic and social activity. The underground's impact on London's social fabric was equally significant. 
by making it easier for people from different social classes to live, work and socialize in closer proximity, the underground helped to break down traditional barriers and foster a more integrated urban society. Across the Atlantic, New York City embraces the subway. New York City, a bustling metropolis, faced a need for efficient transportation. Streets were chaotic with carriages, streetcars, and pedestrians. Construction of the subway began in 1900. On October 27, 1904, the first segment opened, transforming urban mobility. A city on the move, the New York City subway system. The New York City subway, conceived as a solution to the city's transportation woes, quickly became an integral part of its urban fabric. Its network of lines extending like arteries and veins, carrying the lifeblood of the city and its people. The subway's impact on New York City's development, economy and social dynamics has been nothing short of transformative. Unlike London's early underground lines, which primarily served the central core, the New York City subway was envisioned as a more comprehensive transportation system, connecting Manhattan with the outer boroughs of Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx and Staten Island. This ambitious plan reflected the city's rapid growth and the need to provide efficient transportation options for its burgeoning population. The subway's impact on the city's physical landscape was profound. As lines extended into new areas, they spurred development, transforming once rural outskirts into bustling residential and commercial districts. The subway's accessibility made it possible for people to live further from their workplaces, leading to the growth of outer borough neighborhoods and a shift in the city's population density. The subway also played a crucial role in unifying the five boroughs, breaking down physical and psychological barriers and fostering a greater sense of interconnectedness among New Yorkers from different backgrounds and neighborhoods. Pause 7. Engineering a metropolis, building New York's underground arteries. Building the New York City subway was a Herculean task, a testament to the ingenuity and determination of the engineers and laborers who toiled tirelessly beneath the city streets. The project presented formidable engineering challenges, requiring innovative solutions to excavate tunnels, construct stations, and ensure the stability of the city above. The subway's construction involved a combination of cut and cover tunneling used for shallower sections and deep bore tunneling, employed for lines running beneath rivers and densely built up areas. Workers faced hazardous conditions, often digging through bedrock, quicksand, and groundwater confronting the constant threat of cave-ins and flooding. The excavation of tunnels was just one aspect of the subway's complex construction. Engineers also had to devise methods for supporting the streets and buildings above, ensuring that the subway's construction did not undermine the city's existing infrastructure. The construction of subway stations presented its own set of challenges, requiring the excavation of vast underground chambers the installation of platforms, tracks, and electrical systems, and the creation of entrances and exits that integrated seamlessly with the city above. A legacy of innovation subways shape urban life. The subway systems of London and New York City, pioneers in the realm of underground transportation, ushered in a new era of urban mobility their impact reverberating far beyond their subterranean tunnels. The subway, once a daring experiment, became an indispensable part of urban life, shaping the way cities grew, functioned, and evolved. The subway's legacy extends beyond its role as a transportation system. It has influenced urban planning, architecture, social interactions, and the very rhythm of city life. The subway's accessibility and efficiency have made it possible for cities to grow outwards, accommodating larger populations and fostering the development of distinct neighborhoods connected by a web of underground lines. The subway has also played a vital role in shaping urban culture, its stations and trains becoming stages for everyday life, chance encounters and artistic expression. From buskers entertaining commuters to murals adorning station walls, the subway has become an integral part of the urban tapestry reflecting the diversity and dynamism of city life. 
As cities around the world continue to grapple with the challenges of congestion, pollution, and the need for sustainable transportation solutions, the subway's legacy of innovation and its enduring impact on urban life serve as a testament to the transformative power of infrastructure and the enduring human quest for efficient and equitable ways to navigate the urban landscape. Berlin, a city forever marked by its tumultuous history, offers a compelling case study in the interplay between urban transportation and political division. Divided for nearly three decades by the Berlin Wall, the city's U-Bahn and S-Bahn systems became symbols of both separation and resilience, serving as lifelines connecting communities severed by concrete and ideology. The Berlin Wall, erected in 1961, sliced through the heart of the city, physically and ideologically dividing East and West Berlin. Families were torn apart, neighborhoods were severed, and the once unified urban fabric was ripped asunder. Amidst this division, the city's transportation systems, particularly the U-Bahn, became potent symbols of the city's fractured existence. Despite the political and physical barriers, the U-Bahn continued to operate, albeit in a truncated form. Some lines ran entirely within East or West Berlin, while others crossed the border at heavily guarded checkpoints known as Geisterbahnhofer or ghost stations, where trains would pass through without stopping, their darkened platforms a haunting reminder of the city's division. The U-Bahn, despite its limitations, provided a vital link between the two halves of the city, allowing essential workers, diplomats, and a limited number of West Berliners with special permits to cross the border. The subway, in its own way, kept alive the hope of reunification, a subterranean symbol of the city's enduring spirit. The U-Bahn, short for Untergrundbahn, has a long history in Berlin, dating back to the late 19th century. The first line opened in 1902, connecting the city center to Wedding. When the Berlin Wall was erected in 1961, the U-Bahn system was divided. Ghost stations became eerie reminders of the city's division. Despite challenges, the U-Bahn remained vital for Berliners on both sides. The fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 marked a momentous turning point in the city's history, paving the way for reunification and the healing of old wounds. Among the many challenges facing the newly unified city was the task of reintegrating its transportation systems, including the U-Bahn, which had been physically and symbolically divided for nearly three decades. The reunification of the U-Bahn network was a complex and symbolic undertaking. Ghost stations were reopened, their platforms and entrances restored after years of neglect. New lines were built, extending the network into formerly isolated neighborhoods and reconnecting communities that had been separated for far too long. The U-Bahn's post-war resurgence was more than just a matter of laying tracks and restoring stations. It was a powerful symbol of the city's newfound unity and its determination to overcome the legacy of division. The subway, once a symbol of separation, became a potent emblem of connection, facilitating the free flow of people, ideas and opportunities across the former East-West divide. The U-Bahn's renewal was also a testament to the enduring power of infrastructure to shape urban life. By investing in public transportation, Berlin was making a conscious choice to prioritize sustainability, accessibility and the creation of a more equitable and livable city for all its citizens. The S-Bahn, bridging the divide, connecting the city. The S-Bahn connects Berlin's center to its suburbs, playing a crucial role in commuting and regional connectivity. With elevated tracks and faster speeds, it links the urban core to the periphery. The S-Bahn was affected by Berlin's division, with lines operating in East or West Berlin. It became a lifeline for East Berliners, providing access to West Berlin. After reunification, the S-Bahn network was reintegrated and modernized. Today, the S-Bahn and U-Bahn form the backbone of Berlin's public transportation. Paris, the city of lights, embraces the metro. Paris, renowned for its romantic ambience and cultural vibrancy, boasts one of the world's most iconic subway systems, the metro. 
Inaugurated in 1900, the metro transports millions daily through a labyrinth beneath the city's charming streets. Built to alleviate traffic congestion, the metro reflects Paris's elegance and innovation. Engineers developed innovative techniques to minimize disruption during construction. A network of elegance, the metro's enduring allure. The Paris Metro is more than just a transportation system. It is an integral part of the city's cultural identity. From its distinctive Art Nouveau entrances to its beautifully crafted stations, the Metro embodies the city's commitment to aesthetics and design. Many stations feature intricate tile work, vaulted ceilings, and ornate chandeliers. Some stations showcase original artwork, sculptures, and historical exhibits. The Metro's trains have become iconic symbols of Parisian life. Its allure lies in its visual appeal, efficiency, and accessibility. Beyond the Peripherica, extending the metro's reach, as Paris has grown and evolved, so too has its metro network. The system, originally designed to serve the city's historic core, has undergone numerous extensions and expansions to keep pace with the city's growth and to connect its expanding suburbs to the heart of the metropolis. The Peripheriki, a ring road that encircles Paris, has long served as both a physical and psychological boundary between the city and its suburbs. However, the metro has increasingly extended its reach beyond the Peripheriki, connecting outlying areas to the city center and fostering a greater sense of interconnectedness between the urban core and its periphery. The extension of the metro lines has had a significant impact on the development of the Parisian suburbs, fostering the growth of new residential areas, commercial centers and employment hubs. The subway's accessibility and efficiency have made it possible for people to live further from the city center while maintaining access to its employment, cultural and educational opportunities. The metro's expansion beyond the Peripherique reflects a broader trend in urban planning towards creating more polycentric metropolitan regions where multiple centers of activity are connected by efficient and reliable transportation networks. This approach aims to reduce congestion in the city center, promote more balanced development, and enhance the overall livability of the metropolitan area. The Grand Paris Express, a vision for the future. The Grand Paris Express is an ambitious infrastructure project transforming Paris's transportation network. It will add over 200 kilometers of new subway lines, connecting suburbs and fostering sustainability. Over 60 new stations will serve as hubs for economic development and community interaction. This project prioritizes sustainability, accessibility, and economic opportunity for all. The Grand Paris Express promises to reshape the city's landscape and enhance quality of life. The rise of suspension bridges. Rivers and valleys have always challenged human movement. Bridges emerged as solutions, enabling passage across divides. Suspension bridges stand apart as engineering marvels. The concept dates back centuries. Early bridges were simple, made from ropes or bamboo. The Industrial Revolution revolutionized bridge design. High-strength steel cables transformed suspension bridges. Engineers built unprecedented spans, connecting communities. Suspension bridges met the demands of rapid urbanization. They spanned vast distances with minimal disruption. A symphony in steel, the engineering of suspension bridges. The elegance of a suspension bridge belies the complex engineering principles and intricate calculations. A symphony in steel, it is an interplay of tension and compression distributing immense forces. Cables, made of high-strength steel wires, withstand enormous tensile forces. Anchored to solid foundations, they form the bridge's distinctive catenary curve. The Severn Bridge, a triumph over nature's fury. Completed in 1966, it stands as a testament to suspension bridge engineering spanning the wide and turbulent Severn estuary between England and Wales. The construction was a daring feat, pushing engineering boundaries. The estuary's extreme tidal range and strong winds presented challenges. Its width necessitated a long span and exceptional strength. Engineers employed innovative techniques to address these challenges. 
A streamlined deck minimized wind resistance and enhanced stability. The tower's tapered forms reduced wind loads. The seven bridges completion marked a milestone in bridge engineering, paving the way for more ambitious projects in bridge design. Icons of modernity, suspension bridges as symbols of progress. Suspension bridges, with their graceful lines, soaring towers, and impressive spans, have transcended their purely functional roles to become iconic symbols of human ingenuity, technological prowess, and the enduring human spirit of innovation. From the Golden Gate Bridge, its orange silhouette a beacon of hope against the backdrop of San Francisco Bay, to the Akashi Kaikyo Bridge in Japan, its record-breaking span a testament to human ambition, suspension bridges have captured the imagination of people around the world. The construction of a suspension bridge is often seen as a symbol of progress, a tangible manifestation of a community's commitment to connecting people, fostering economic growth, and overcoming geographical barriers. These bridges, once completed, often become sources of local pride, their images emblazoned on postcards, souvenirs, and even currency, serving as reminders of collective achievement and shared ambition. Beyond their practical and symbolic significance, suspension bridges also possess an undeniable aesthetic appeal. Their slender silhouettes, graceful curves, and intricate cable work often evoke a sense of awe and wonder, transforming otherwise mundane landscapes into breathtaking vistas. These bridges at their best are not just feats of engineering, but also works of art, their forms reflecting the creativity and vision of their designers. Beyond the horizon, the future of suspension bridge design. As materials, science, computer modeling, and construction techniques advance, the future holds daring possibilities. Engineers are exploring new materials like carbon fiber composites, offering exceptional strength to weight ratios. This enables longer spans and efficient designs. Advanced modeling tools allow virtual testing and optimization. These tools predict behavior under various conditions, including extreme events like earthquakes and high winds. This leads to safer, resilient designs. Sensors and monitoring systems collect real-time data, providing early warnings and enabling timely maintenance. This extends the lifespan of critical infrastructure. The quest for longer, stronger and elegant bridges continues, driven by the desire to connect and explore. The future promises innovative and awe-inspiring designs. the evolution of ports. Ports have shaped human civilization for millennia, serving as conduits for trade, exploration, and cultural exchange. From ancient Mediterranean harbors to modern megaports, they have adapted to the demands of maritime trade. Early ports were simple inlets or river mouths, evolving to accommodate larger vessels and increasing trade. Breakwaters and jetties protected harbors, while wharves and piers allowed efficient loading and unloading. The steam engine revolutionized maritime transportation, leading to faster, larger, and more reliable ships. Ports expanded and developed new infrastructure to handle the increasing scale of maritime trade. From sail to steam, the transformation of maritime trade. The transition from sail to steam power in the 19th century marked a turning point in maritime history. Sailing ships gave way to steamships, transforming speed, scale, and efficiency of trade. Ports adapted to steamships with coaling stations and deeper drafts. This led to significant growth in international trade and economic expansion. The Container Revolution, a logistics breakthrough. The mid-20th century witnessed another transformative chapter in the evolution of ports with the advent of containerization. This revolutionary logistics system, pioneered in the 1950s, involved the use of standardized shipping containers, large, rectangular boxes made of steel, to transport goods by sea, rail, and road. Prior to containerization, cargo was typically shipped as brake bulk cargo, meaning individual items were loaded, stowed, and unloaded piece by piece, a labor-intensive and time-consuming process. The introduction of containers revolutionized cargo handling, 
dramatically reducing the time and cost of loading and unloading ships. Containers could be stacked efficiently on ships, trains, and trucks, eliminating the need for manual sorting and handling of individual items. This standardized system also simplified logistics, reducing paperwork, minimizing damage and theft, and streamlining the movement of goods across borders and continents. The container revolution had a dramatic impact on ports, which had to adapt their infrastructure and operations to accommodate this new system. Specialized container terminals, equipped with massive gantry cranes and sophisticated tracking systems, were built to handle the loading and unloading of container ships. Ports also invested in expanded storage areas, intermodal connections to rail and road networks, and computerized systems to manage the flow of containers through their facilities. Automation and efficiency, the Moda N port. The modern port is a marvel of engineering and logistics, a testament to the ongoing quest for efficiency, automation and sustainability in the face of ever-increasing global trade volumes. Driven by technological advancements and the relentless pursuit of cost savings, ports have embraced automation, data analytics and sophisticated management systems to optimize their operations and maintain their competitive edge in the global marketplace. Container terminals once bustling with manual labor are increasingly automated, with massive gantry cranes operating autonomously guided by laser sensors and computer algorithms. Automated guided vehicles, or AGVs, navigate the terminal yards, transporting containers between berths, storage areas and intermodal transfer points, minimizing human intervention and maximizing efficiency. Data analytics and artificial intelligence are playing a growing role in port operations, enabling operators to optimize berth allocation, predict vessel arrival times, and manage traffic flow within the port area. Sophisticated software systems track containers in real time, providing shippers and logistics providers with end-to-end -end visibility of their cargo throughout the supply chain. The modern port is not just about efficiency and automation. Sustainability is also becoming an increasingly important consideration. Ports are implementing measures to reduce their environmental footprint, such as using shoreside power for docked ships, investing in electric or hybrid cargo handling equipment and promoting alternative fuels for trucks and vessels. The future of ports, sustainability and innovation. Ports are evolving into smart green logistics hubs, embracing new technologies to optimize efficiency and minimize their ecological footprint. Integrating renewable energy sources like solar and wind is key. Electrification of port equipment reduces air pollution and noise. Advances in automation and AI will shape the future of ports. Cities in constant motion. Our journey through urban transportation reveals adaptation, innovation and progress. From horse-drawn carriages to high-speed rail, cities evolve with how people move. Each era faces unique transportation challenges and opportunities. Electric trams and subways emerged from horse-drawn traffic congestion. The rise of automobiles led to vast highway systems. Efficient, reliable and affordable transportation shaped cities and lives. Shaping Tomorrow's Transit, a vision of sustainability and innovation. Urban transportation faces complex challenges. Growing populations and climate change demand innovative, sustainable solutions. Autonomous vehicles and AI traffic management can revolutionize urban mobility. A holistic approach is needed for all users, from pedestrians to public transit riders. Embracing bold ideas and sustainable solutions can create livable, equitable cities. Thank you for watching Transit Transformations, the wild evolution of urban infrastructure. If you enjoyed this journey through the history of urban transit, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating content. Leave a comment below about your favorite part of the video or any interesting facts you know about urban transportation. Stay tuned for more episodes.